Okay, I've got a 2009 Ford Escape Hybrid that I left sitting around for too long and the hybrid battery dropped below 300 volts so the car wouldn't start. Um, what I've put together here is a video about the easiest way to get that battery charged back up so you can get it running again. Keep in mind that hybrid battery is high voltage and it's got a danger of electrocution or death. So perform this at your own risk. Make sure you remove that orange safety disconnect plug whenever you can. There's a list of stuff you'll need. This is all the stuff that I used. Um, some of the tools you can improvise on your own and I will put this list also in the comments section below. And I hopefully didn't leave out anything. So let's get going. One of the first things you want to do is remove that carpet covering the battery in the back. I just kind of set it aside, put all the parts on top of it later on. There's where you can see the orange disconnect plug. Don't just unlock it, you have to completely remove the plug in order to take advantage of the safety disconnect. Remove that rear plastic trim by the tailgate. And then you're going to want to remove the plastic trim on the sides, over on the passenger side and over on the driver's side. You don't need to remove it completely. Just kind of get it away. There's a couple of screws you're going to need to access on the sides of the battery cover. So you need this plastic out of the way so you can kind of get in there and get to those screws. I just kind of twisted those panels up and wedged them against the ceiling so I didn't have to completely take them out, but just to kind of get them out of the way. The next part here is optional, but I figure as long as you have all the covers removed, um, this might be a good time to just double check and make sure that the connection for the air cooling system for the battery is nice and clean. I've got a couple of dogs, so I always have sand and dog hair everywhere in the car. So I always want to pop this black plastic cover off and just make sure everything's clean so we have nice airflow into the battery and it can cool off properly. All right, so the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is remove the black styrofoam spacer that's between the rear seat and the battery. It's just glued into place, so just go ahead and pop it off and set it aside. There's a couple of 10 millimeter hex head screws on the front edge of the battery cover, so that's why you need to take that styrofoam piece off. There's also a couple of side screws, uh, T30 Torx screws. They don't have pins in them. They're really short and they're on the side. These are the ones that are gonna to be tough to get to. There's one on the passenger side and one on the driver's side. They'll take a, a T30 bit or um, you might be able to fit an Allen wrench inside there if you get the one the right size. Okay, next use a T30 Torx bit with a center hole to remove the 18 Torx screws on the top of the cover. All of these screws have a center pin, so you're gonna to need to make sure you have that correct bit. There's 18 of them all together and it's pretty much just in the front part of the battery. This one's in the rear, you don't have to take off. Just the, the ones for the cover of the battery, which is in the front part, closest to the front of the car. All right, make sure you've removed all 18 of the torque screws on the top of the cover. Got them all set aside. Now grab that 10 millimeter wrench and get the two screws out that are right facing the back seat where you pulled that black styrofoam spacer out of. These are pretty easy to get to. I'm trying to do this left-handed since I'm holding the camera in my right hand, so it's not looking very uh, great. But just get these off. You'll be putting these back on. So once you get them off, just set them aside. Next, you need to get into that really tight space to remove the passenger side and driver side T30 screws. I used a T30 bit taped into a quarter inch box wrench so I could have a, like a little short wrench. You can see the spacing is really tight in here and it's really kind of a bitch to get to. And you won't be able to turn 
the wrench, you might be able to, uh, if you've got the right kind of tools, you might have a, a really short uh, ratchet. Just be patient and realize that even though it's slow, it's still faster than removing the entire battery. This is pretty much where I spent most of my time doing to get the cover off. On the plus side, there's only two of these screws and they're really short. Once you get them going, you can kind of get them out uh, with your fingers, but the first few turns are a little bit of a bitch. Once you finally remove them, you'll be so pissed at them, you'll probably just throw them away like I did. So you can see, finally get your fingers in there. You can see what the screws look like. They're really short. I don't see any sense in putting them back in. It's not worth the headache. Once I found out the size and I found an old Ikea Allen wrench, um, I used a grinder and I cut the long handled Allen wrench off. And this made it a little bit easier. It's still kind of uh, tricky to get to, but still really aggravating. Like I said, this is the most frustrating part in the entire job. The rest of the job is really pretty easy. There's those screws. They're going to go right in the trash can and I'm not going to bother putting them back in. They don't really do much except annoy you. All right, now you can remove the battery cover and here we can see the battery. Make sure that orange disconnect plug is out. Now it's my understanding on the years before 2009, they had a charging system in place inside the battery and for whatever reason they didn't include it in the 2009. It was over on the driver's side and you can see this uh, kind of empty area with this gray plastic. And this is where we're gonna tap into. They left the wires for the charging system there. So we're gonna tap into those and we're gonna put in our own charger. So it's already got wires in there. Um, take that gray foam, get all the wire ties off there. I think there was five wire ties. Just clip those off, save that piece of gray foam. And you're gonna see a pair of uh, wires covered in an orange wire loom. One has a gray connector and one has a black connector. The gray connector is positive and the black connector is negative. These were part of the uh, earlier years charging system but they just kind of left this, these wires in place in the 2009, even though they didn't include the charging system. Make sure you label these wires in case you cut the connectors off. You won't get them mixed up. And next, locate the unused six pin bulkhead connector and remove it from the side of the battery housing. This is uh, facing the rear seat. Once you have that off, you can install a three quarter inch electrical junction box clamp. And this is where I'm going to put the plug for the battery charger. So it's sticking out of the battery and I can uh, charge it up later if the same thing happens again. There's a couple of ears on the device I'm using for a battery charger. Use a couple self-tapping screws and I just screw it into that empty place over on the driver's side. See it screwed down in a couple of places. Next, you're going to want to put a regular three prong household plug on the AC side of the battery charger. I just bought one of these little cheapy three prong plugs, installed it on there, and it's going to be uh, sitting out by the, the back seat. Using a tester on the gray and black connectors, I put uh, the safety disconnect back in and used my voltmeter to test the voltage. And as you can see, I've got about 247 volts in that battery, which is not enough to start it. You got to get it over about 300. So take that orange safety disconnect plug out after checking the voltage. Pretty much want to always have that out. Next thing I did is I soldered the battery charger up to the positive and negative cable. So I stripped those um, and used some heat shrink tubing 
and soldered those up and kind of have them out of the way. I put the connectors back on just so I can have a tap to stick my voltmeter in, but it's not really necessary. I'm not going to test it again once I put the, the lid on the battery. With the foam zip tied back over the wires, I plug the charger into an unplugged extension cord and then put the orange safety disconnect plug back inside. So I've got everything ready to go, except I've got the extension cord unplugged. So I'm going to put the orange safety disconnect back in, which will complete the circuit to the battery. And it's 247 volts. Now I'm going to see if my charging system works. Plug my extension cord into a live outlet and we can see the voltage starting to increase. You can see it goes up pretty quick at first and then it starts slowing down. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to get that uh, above 300 so it might take a few minutes. While you're waiting for the voltage to get over 300, cut out a section of the black styrofoam spacer over on the driver's side. And this will be used as a little place to hold that AC plug when it's not being used. I just kind of chewed out some of that styrofoam and now I've got a place to put that plug where it won't be rattling around or getting smashed when it's not being used. All right, looks like we're doing okay on voltage. We're up to about 347, according to the meter. And now we should head on over and face the moment of truth. Pop the key in, give it a turn, and we're good to go. Car starts right up. And now we've got a charger installed inside the battery, so we won't have this problem again. If we do, we can just plug it in and charge it up until we can start the car again. So now I just gotta put everything back. Uh, take the orange safety disconnect plug out, uh, put the battery cover back on with those 18 T30 screws and those two 10 millimeter hex screws put the black plastic air system cover back on, snap in the plastic trim over the wheel wells and by the tailgate, and then put the orange safety plug back in. Make sure you twist it to the locked position. And the only thing left to do is stow that plug, pull the carpet, and cover everything up, and you're good to go.